before we jump to the question, Ed, uh, let me introduce myself again. Hi, I'm Nadine uh, from Gadis Magazine. Nice to meet okay. you, Nadine. Yeah, how are you, Ed? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm surviving the pandemic. Yeah, how are you? Oh, me too. I'm surviving. I'm a survivor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a survivor. <laughs> but how's the pandemic situation over there? Um, well, we're in lockdown at the moment, um, which has been obviously difficult. Uh, but you know, everyone's going through the same the same stuff at the moment. And um, we've just yesterday the prime minister announced that we're going to try and be out of lockdown by the summer. So we still got quite a long time to be in lockdown, but hopefully after that, that will be the end of it. So. Yeah, just trying to survive every day at the moment and not get too bored. Yeah, hopefully everything's getting better in this world. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> what about you? How's, how's it been for you? Well, it's been quite good. We're not mm. doing lockdown actually, not really. But yeah, oh, I remember we, we reached actually zero case from oh, Corona. Wow. And it's a couple of days ago, I guess, and that's I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! Yeah, that is. Yeah, amazing. but I don't know. I don't know for today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it's back up today. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Ed, I know a lot of people have been asking you this same question, but why did you choose Hilang Child as your stage name instead of Admiral? I mean, like, there's probably billions words of Indonesian. Yeah. yeah. Why you choose Hilang? You can choose Tampan, which is which is pretty. <laughs> Or <laughs> Jantik child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. You know. So I, I, um, when I first came up with the name, the main reason that I wanted a stage name was uh, simply because I didn't. I just didn't want to use my own name. So it was almost like I was kind of trying to hide myself behind a name. Um, and uh, so yeah, I guess when I was kind of. When I was kind of coming up with stuff, I suppose missing child, lost child, Anak Kilang kind of felt like the um, it felt like it was appropriate to what I was trying to do by having a name in the first place. Um, and then I just wanted to have, yeah, you know, I thought it would be interesting being a being blasted and myself. I thought it would be interesting to have like one word of Bahasa, one word of uh, English, um, and so yeah, kind of Hilang child is what I what I stuck on. Um, but yeah, but then I didn't really think much more of it uh, until then. And it's only when, uh, yeah, kind of people in Indonesia start, started listening that I realized that a lot of people just found the name quite funny. Yeah, it is quite funny. <laughs> I mean, he laughed. Now I, it's too late to change now. Something or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe I should have chosen like jantik child or something like that or tampan yeah tampan means Tam uh, handsome right? yeah yeah handsome child that'll be that'll be my side project will be handsome child <laughs> <laughs> well okay okay since you already told me that you're half indonesian i know your mm. father is jakarta yeah 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 okay did your father or both our parents give you knowledge about indonesian culture and what is it yeah, a little bit. I mean, my my dad used to cook a lot of Indonesian food every week. Um, he, we had a bit of a thing growing up where every Wednesday my dad would cook an Indonesian meal. Ooh. So uh, so yeah, so every Wednesday was like gado gado or rendang or like soto ayam. Um, and then, but yeah, you know, we would we would be uh, we would go and visit Indonesia every couple of years to see my family. So we'd um yeah we we kind of travel around and we travel to like Jogja and, and Bandung and all these places and so yeah so I kind of got to know a lot of a lot of the areas around there and uh visit places like Tankuban Prahu and and also we used to go to Bali as well and and, and visit places in Bali um and and also <laughs> my like my dad would uh my dad had like an anklung at home that i used to play on and we used to listen to gamelan music and, and things like that so um yeah it was it, I, yeah i was kind of it was lightly put into me was uh my my kind of um yeah my heritage uh, uh of indonesia well yeah. well i believe your father teach you great because oh. here you are <laughs> Thank you. finally with the successful things Oh, okay, thank but you. <laughs> give me, it's give me wondering, um, has music and songwriting uh, been your passion for a long time? 
and what does music mean to you? Yeah, it has. I guess it has. I mean, it's the only music is the only thing that I ever really wanted to do um, since I discovered it. I mean, I started out as a drummer um, and I was playing as a as a session musician. So, you know, being hired to play for singers or in kind of house bands and things like that. Um, and I actually when I first started playing, I wanted to be in a punk rock band, funnily enough. Um, <laughs> But which, which never actually happened. But yeah, music was just the only thing that I think I ever really, uh, really had a genuine interest in. Um, and then I started, I actually didn't start songwriting until I was um, already in my 20s. And I and I was I was kind of touring a lot as a drummer with other artists. But as much as I was enjoying it, I just it felt like I was always playing someone else's songs and always playing someone else's music. And I just wanted to uh yeah i had like a creative itch inside me that i just wanted to to work on and 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 have my own creative output um and so i i kind of started writing just to amuse myself and just for the fun of it really and um a few years later here we are suddenly it's it's like i'm now doing albums and it's the thing that i'm kind of known for <laughs> rather than being a drummer. and it's your second album right <laughs> yeah yeah wow. it is yeah good job Ed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> so talking about album let's talk about your mm. every movers okay this is mm. your second album like i said before what is make it different from your first album so the second album i'd say it's a lot more um upbeat in places than the first album i wanted it to be yeah a lot louder and a lot kind of more raw and uh and yeah just be be the kind of music that that really hits me when i go to a show or like you know when you when you're kind of blasting the radio kind of the kind of music that really hits me and grabs my attention it's stuff that has like choruses that you can shout along to and big distorted bass lines and things like that um and i think my first album was a lot more kind of soft and a lot more dreamy uh, and while this album has got a lot of that it's in general a lot more um upfront and um and yeah just a bit more upbeat um, and also with this album, I wanted it to not be so lonely because the first album was was very much me solo on my own, um, kind of writing and recording everything. And so this time uh, I had a lot of friends in to to do like group singing with me, and I co-wrote some songs. And um, yeah, it was it was uh, just a more kind of communal, collaborative experience this time. Well, I can imagine when you're on a concert. So when I listen to music, I could like do this. Mm. Cool, that's I, already, good. I already listen all of them. <laughs> cool, that's good. <laughs> that's it. The kind of the kind of music that makes you want to makes you move. That's what I want to achieve. Yeah, yeah, one, so. yeah. That's correct. That's it. Cool. Yeah, indeed, make me want to move. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Do you have any specific inspiration for this album? Maybe you listen something when you're making it. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different artists that. I, could, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I have any specific inspiration, but I think that as as a songwriter, like most of what you listen to somehow influences what you do and, and influences what, what comes out. Um, so I think, I mean, when I was writing this album, I was listening to a lot. I, was, I mean, so much different stuff, really. I was listening to people like Kendrick Lamar and Flying Lotus, and then also listening to Bjork and uh ryuchi sakamoto and joe hisashi um and i was also i was actually i was listening to a lot of people like sigrid like pop pop musicians like that um so yeah just low like all kinds of stuff really um yeah it's, it's almost hard to remember when people ask what my influences were because i think that just everything i listen to influences me in some way um so yeah <laughs> yeah i feel this album is really unique Oh, I never, yeah, this remind me one of band in Indonesia called Alexa. Sometimes they make they make kind of music like this, like make you okay. want to move something like that. You should. Oh, cool. You should hear I, them, Alexa. <laughs> I, I'll check. Yeah, how, wait. I'm gonna write this down. How how do I spell this? Just Alexa, a? like A L E X A. Yes. Okay, I'll check them out. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, the timing. That you release this album is really unique also just like your music mm. because mm. this pandemic everyone's feel like anxious and disoriented but why did you and your team decided to release this album during the pandemic 
Well, the album was actually like I'd, we'd finished recording it before the pandemic started. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we finished it kind of during lockdown. But by that point, um, yeah, it was done. And the choice was we could either kind of wait until the pandemic is over to release it. Um, but then we we just had no idea how long it might be going on for. And and so we didn't want to just like sit and be waiting forever. So we thought, you know what, let's just let's just release it as it is now, because, um, yeah, otherwise it may just never come out like we never knew. Um, but also, I think I think it worked out well because the what the album talks about um, is, uh, yeah, a lot, you know, a lot of the subject matter is about kind of dealing with anxiety and insecurity and um, and kind of, yeah, being addicted to social media. And these were things that during the pandemic, because we can't go out, I think a lot of people were dealing with even more than ever. So I think it kind of worked. Um, it, it worked timing wise in that sense as well, because it's it's a way to address these things that we're going through. So it's like more relate if you release it now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's like 11 songs on the album. 11. 11 songs. Yeah. Which songs that describe you the most? Like your favorite song and maybe you have unforgettable memory when you're making it. <laughs> mm, I, I mean, I think Anthropic is is my favorite song from the album, uh, which is one of the singles, just because I think that that was uh, it's like a very positive song. And um, the I wanted, you know, I was writing the album to kind of bring myself some positivity through the um, through kind of the negative times that I've I was going through um, and I think Anthropic is a really good example of that because it's a positive song uh, in terms of the kind of the sound you know it's very upbeat and euphoric and lyrically it's very positive but also um, just writing that song and working on it like made me feel very kind of fulfilled and positive both both in terms of you know what I was writing myself and then also the chance to be able to collaborate with um uh, with Ritipo, who's the sax player, saxophone player. Um, we just had so much fun making it and um, and it was a really great and kind of happy time. Um, so I'd say that is the that's the song that um, that best represents the album for me, I think. Well, if I may, can you sing a little bit of the reference? <laughs> a little bit of that one. I, t I, I tell you what, I've got my uh, I've got my piano here. Oh, OK. My piano? Um, <laughs> it's a bit oh. extra. <laughs> A bit extra. Do you know what? I haven't, I haven't, um, <laughs> I haven't sung this song in a while because I've not been doing shows. So I hope I remember it. In time, that's it. In time, I'll prize and hold you tight. We'll count the birds outside, and when the curtains drawn. We'll conjugate ourselves again and again. Ooh. There we go. It's it's very early in the morning here, so my voice is still well. It's not very early now, but my voice is still like I've still got a morning voice. So <laughs> <laughs> apologies if it's, it's rough. It's really beautiful, Ed. <laughs> oh, thank you. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, I also interested in your song called Sawat Aeroplay. <laughs> mm. I know I, I when I listen to oh when I listen to it, I gonna get like father and son vibe. Okay. So what is actually the song about? Yeah, so well it's funny that you got father and son vibes because that song is about my dad. Um okay. it's about him uh, so my dad uh, he he moved away from Indonesia when he was 16 years old. Um and I wrote that song. Actually, it was it was just before I was going on a trip to Indonesia a few years ago. And I was kind of the night before flying. I was just thinking about how much courage it, it must have taken my dad at the age of 16 to leave his family and leave his country and move to the other side of the world. Um, and uh, and yes, yeah, so I kind of wanted to write that song as a tribute to him and a tribute to to um, to that journey of of you know, traveling, like leaving your home to go to a completely alien new place. Um, and yeah, I think that people have asked about the title of it, the title of the song, I suppose, uh, you know, when I was writing it, what I could, what I was imagining was like the view out of, out of uh, the window on the airplane that he was flying on. 
on his first journey out of Indonesia um, and kind of, yeah, you know, having Pesawat Bahasa Indonesia and then Aeroplane English, I suppose, kind of represented the that transition from from uh, home in Indonesia to a new place in, in uh, England. Oh, that's why you choose like Labuan Bajo from, for the music video, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, because it's... Uh, because it's yeah it's like i'm imagining his view over indonesia and um yeah well well recognized from the video <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think so i think so okay yeah yeah i know you've been to indonesia a lot mm -hmm. right because your father is indonesian so uh do you have like experience that you remember from the visit like what's unforgettable oh yeah i mean every every time i visit there's there's unforgettable experiences a lot of it is to do with um yeah i mean a lot of the, a lot of the most unforgettable experiences are, are kind of just things i've done with my family there that i uh that, that i just don't often get the chance to do because we because we live on the other side of the world from each other so um like last time i was there a bunch of me and my cousins uh got in a studio and just started playing some punk rock music together um so there's those kind of experiences but then in terms of indonesia itself there's i mean i love visiting you know i, I have family in bandung and so uh, when i go and see them we go up and we go up and walk up tankuban prahu um and then you know i love going to uh yeah i love going to places like borobudur and stuff i know it's like the the generic tourist place to go to ah, but, yeah, yeah. but every time we go like me and my family go for a walk around borobudur it's, it's those those kind of places um yeah those those kind of memories are quite unforgettable and then last time i was in indonesia in in 2018 um i was actually performing um i, I played at a couple of festivals i played at uh, archipelago festival in jakarta um, and i played at bali and that was a really special experience because you know I, I i it was the first time i'd performed in indonesia and the first time that a lot of my um indonesian family were able to see me perform um and it was uh yeah, and it just felt very kind of life affirming and very important. Um, and I'll never forget that. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, let's talk about five years from now. Mm. What kind of big goal you'd like to achieve as a musician five uh, years from you, now? You know what? I would love to write a pop album. I would love to write some pop music, you know, um, whether that's like my own pop album or like with another artist, I don't know, but that's that's something I'd like to achieve um and then yeah what else i think i'd like i i do you know what i i feel like i haven't been playing drums enough recently so i'd love to kind of get back into the drums and uh and maybe start finally start the punk rock band that i wanted to start when i was a teenager yeah, i want to ask you about that why did you start the punk rock band <laughs> Oh, I, do you know what? I, I, I just loved, as a teenager, I was just so into, like, punk rock music was, that's what I wanted to do. Well, like, pop punk. So, yeah, Green Day and all those bands. That was what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and it obviously just didn't, didn't, oh, it hasn't happened so far. But, uh, um, yeah, it, I think it's just something on my bucket list that I have to tick okay. off. <laughs> okay, we have, we have to wait in that band come out. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um, well, yeah. I for those who don't know Hilang Chow, which of mm. your song will you give them as an introduction and why? Um, I think, I, I mean, I probably Anthropic, which I, I played a small yeah. bit of before, um, just because, yeah, I think that's one of my favourite songs that I've written. And it and I think it, like I said earlier, I think it, it very well, um, it, it represents what I want to achieve with Hilang Child with, you know, um, a kind of a mixture of euphoria and also kind of melancholy in in some parts and um and it's just got a nice big kind of wall of sound and an upbeat chorus and uh it's, it's kind of one of my favorite songs and so that's the one that that i'd that i yeah kind of hope other people heard first maybe okay okay <laughs> maybe so i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> why are you not so sure I do, because I, I guess like other people because other people will hear my music and maybe they'll have a different song that is their favorite song and maybe they won't they, they'll be less into a song like anthropic because i think because some of my songs are quite different like for example uh like good to be young which is the first song on the album i think is quite a different song it's a lot darker than anthropic and so 
So, you know, some people would prefer that kind of song over over like a more kind of pop pop kind of song like Anthropic. But um yeah, it's down to personal preference, I guess. But yeah, Anthropic is the one that I'd, that okay. I'd maybe Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you weren't a musician or a singer, what you would be and why? Oh what would I be if I was not a musician? Uh, do you know what? Actually, I would I would love to do something to do with the environment. You know, we, we I think we're we're living through a time where where humans as a species have caused so much. It's really important now to kind of to take stock and and yeah and kind of and, and and for us to as a species really focus on reversing some of the damage we cause so that's something that is quite important to me and i'd i'd probably be looking to work in in something to do with the environment um and yeah kind of the protection of our natural world which i still probably hopefully will do at some point i it's, you know it's definitely um definitely on the cards as uh, something i'd like to do with my life is devote some time to that so uh yeah okay probably noted <laughs> Noted. <laughs> okay. Next, we're going to play a mini games. <laughs> okay. I believe okay. you can speak Bahasa a little bit. Okay. I believe you. Only a little. You, know <laughs> you probably know these words. Uh, I'm I'm going to uh, give you like three words, slang words okay. from Indonesian, and I want you to guess the meaning. And if it's too hard for you, I will give you an options, like two options. Okay. 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 Okay, okay, ready? Yeah. First word is maga. M A G E R. <laughs> maga. <laughs> you want you want the options? <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you give me, give me the options? Okay. A. I'm not hungry. B. I feel lazy to do something. Okay, hold on. Hungry. <laughs> I think I think it's lazy because hungry wait Lapar, lapar. Oh, right, hungry is lapar, right? So I, I think it's know. lazy, 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 lazy. Okay. I'm feeling too lazy. Yeah. You lock the answer. I lock the answer. Okay, it's correct. It's I feel yes. lazy. This is something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next word. Okay. Galau. G A L A U. Galau. The option A. Let's take a walk to the park. B. I'm so sad. Oh. Hmm. I don't think it's walk to the park because that's yeah, yeah, Jalan. No, yeah. It's it's sad, I think. I think it's sad. Okay, you locked the answer, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I locked the answer. It's correct. It's I'm so sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. Okay, last word. Last word. Bucin, B U C I N, A slave of love, B <laughs> best friend of all time. Oh, I think. Hold on. Say it again. What are the options again? Love slave, slave of love. Yeah, slave friend? of love and best friend <laughs> all of time. <laughs> I think love slave. I think it's slave. I think it's a slave of love. Why? Why you choose that? Why are you sure? Are you sure you choose it? It just it just sounds quite funny. Taman, <laughs> yeah, it just sounds quite funny. I choose A. That's what okay. I'm. That's what I'm looking. Okay, it's correct. It's A. Yes, a hundred percent. Woo, one hundred percent right. Okay, your bahasa oh, yeah. is really good. I I mean it's slang. A lot of yeah. not a lot of people know that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, what time do uh, okay five minutes more okay i think one games will be fine okay okay now that yeah. this game's called this or that say okay i will give you two options and pick you can pick one that suits you the most and tell okay. me uh the reasons just short reasons okay, okay. first guitar or drums 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 for sure because it's oh i just uh, yeah it's what i've it's always been my thing is playing the drums um i can't play the guitar as well i'm one of the only musicians i know that can't play the guitar so drums <laughs> okay i stopped imagining something i did 
<laughs> and imagine you're playing rock and you know like playing punk rock yes yeah 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 oh my god okay stop that <laughs> okay second coffee or tea coffee Ooh, coffee what? I, because I, I, i'm addicted to caffeine i need the caffeine <laughs> i have okay. about five coffees a day really so, that's not healthy ed I, I know. That's not healthy. <laughs> I know. It's okay. Bad. Sleep on or trainers? Trainers. Yeah, trainers. Okay. It's I, more I, comfortable. I, I, it's more comfortable. And uh, yeah, I just, I love good shoes. I've got a bit of a thing for good shoes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pop or metal? <laughs> oh, that's hard. <laughs> Well, pop probably, but I do love ah. some metal. I, I was, I, uh, when I was growing up, a lot of my friends were into really heavy, heavy music. So I do love, I do have a bit of a thing for metal, but for me personally, pop, pop. Yeah, I feel, I feel kind of disappointed you choose pop. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> are you, are you, are you a metal fan? Are you a metal fan? No, I, well, my mm. brothers love okay. that. So I grew up with that, but mm. yeah, yeah. I, I have to imagine you playing metal. Okay, stop. <laughs> okay, last one. Straight hair or curly? Uh, for me or for other people? For you. For me. Um, do you know what? I've I've always I, I would quite I, I kind of wish I had curly hair. I quite like curly hair. You know, maybe. Uh, I'm trying to imagine it. I'm just looking at myself now, trying to imagine curls. You have. Maybe I need afro, to get some rollers. Right? <laughs> Do you know, I'm going to say curly hair because I think it'll be quite cool to have a big afro, a big curly afro. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe yeah. this is the last question because the time limit is. Okay. 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 What message do you want to say to your fans in Indonesia? Uh, what message do I want to say? I, I would say, well, firstly, thank you so much for um, to everyone who has listened and supported me so far. Um, and you know I, I i love coming to visit indonesia and i really hope that in the next year or so when the pandemic's over i'll be there again to perform and to to meet to meet you and um yeah and just just i hope that yeah i hope it can all happen soon it's what i'd love to do so um yeah wait for me tunggu sebentar i'll be there tunggu kok <laughs> tunggu kok <laughs> yeah i'm waiting for you <laughs> please do please do <laughs> Okay, Ed, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very it's much. Really... Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's been Must... really nice to speak to you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I still mm -hmm. imagine you're playing hard rock or something. <laughs>